G'day team, welcome back to another episode of Phil's Works YouTube channel. Um, while you take a moment, go over to my Instagram at Phil's Works, follow me there. Um, I post a lot more of the little itty bitty stuff I do on these sorts of projects. It's just easier on my phone to flick the stuff up. Um, while you're there, why don't you chuck a subscribe on for me, it helps me make these videos. I like doing them, but if no one watches them, there's not much point. So anyway, we're back on Fraser's Big Twin Evo in a wishbone frame. So if you haven't watched the first episode on this bike, go back and watch that on my channel. This is a wishbone frame that I built from scratch to house all of his running gear that he bought me. So in this episode, I'm gonna go through and finish off all the fabrication on this bike. I'm gonna do the sissy bar, I'm gonna do the exhaust, I'm gonna do the foot pegs, I'm gonna do all the wiring for this bike. Basically gonna get it to a running, ripping stage. So maybe you're doing something like this at home, maybe you wanna tackle a project like this at home. This is gonna be a great video to watch if you wanna get some fabrication tips or wiring tips that a lot of people have asked for. And basically just fucking all in all, just a bike video, putting this thing together. So let's get into this. First off, I'm gonna get into the foot pegs. I'm gonna make a little template, probably out of a bit of TIG wire. And then from there, I'm gonna machine the actual foot pegs, bend them to size to suit my little TIG in template I've made. And then we're gonna put these things on, then make the exhaust around the foot pegs. So let's fucking get into it. All right, so we're down here sussing out these foot pegs. So I made these uh, little foot pegs already, just these fucking little plate steel guys. Um, Chopperware in Sydney makes like a little DIY kit. It was like fucking 50 bucks or something and you just gotta weld these together. So pretty sweet, uh, little old looking uh, foot pegs. But we wanna make the steel bar that these will sit on, so it'll sit I don't know, I'm thinking something like that. I want them sort of high, I don't want forwards. Forwards look fucked and they feel even worse. So I want some sort of mids, but not high mids. They are, they look sweet, but they are absolutely uncomfortable as fuck. So I sort of want it in line with the crank, I reckon. So then I can just make the other side in, in line with the cam and then they're both the same. So he'll live about there. So I'm gonna bend up a bit of steel. So this is the steel I'm gonna use. This is just some 5.8 or 16 mil for us Aussies. Um, stainless rod and this guy fits in there like that, mint. So that is how that will live. So I've just gotta bend it up. These are some real shitty ones for America. You guys are pretty fucking dodgy over there. So I'm gonna do a little bit better than this. So that's gonna go. So to bend this up to work out what we need it to be, we're gonna use some TIG wire. So this is just gonna be so we can get a, you know, a pretty close little um, template and then we can take our rod over to the press and bend it into the, into the shape that we want. So I'm just gonna cut off a bit of this like that. So obviously we're just gonna put it in position. I want, so this is gonna be different for every bike because I've welded these um, foot peg mounts on, they're floorboard mounts, and I've just welded them on to accept the rod to make foot pegs, so they're on a different angle than what they'd be on a stock bike. So this is gonna be different for your bike. So um, I just put the rod in the position it's gonna be, and then bend it in the positions that I want it to be bent. Obviously this stuff's really easy to bend. So we can make a quick little template. So that's sort of right, and then we want a bend straight like this. Obviously it's gonna turn out a little bit different in the stainless because it's quite large, but that is pretty well the gist of it. So I'll cut it long, always cut it long, you can always take some off, can't put it back on. So there is our template. So that is the shape that we're gonna want this rod in to be the foot, where the foot peg's gonna live. So, first things first, you wanna machine this before you bend it, because it's gonna be impossible afterwards. So, I'm gonna machine this. You could do this another way, you could put a, you could tap this, and then you could put a bolt into it, but I like making this a male that'll go through the floorboard mount and then just have a nut underneath it. So, this is my template for the B side, hopefully it's pretty similar to the A side, so they're both pretty the same, but there's the template. 
I'm gonna go through and machine our rod and then bend it. So, right, this is my crude little drawing. Um, I just measured the floorboard mount and it was about half an inch thick. So I want about half an inch of thread engagement here. I made the bolt M8 because I don't know if this doesn't apply to you Americans, but in Australia, when you lose a fucking bolt and you make this Imperial, everywhere does not have it fucking Imperial. So if you make your stuff metric like this, when you lose a bolt on the road, you can fucking replace it. So I put an M8 on that. Um, it's 3.8 here. Um, so I just gotta go ahead and make, oh, fuck, hold on. Here we are here. So one that I just fucking made. So like I said, M8 thread, 3.8, shaft and then I just put a nice shoulder on this so it'll bolt through. Let's um, get this bitch out eh? and have a, have a freaking look. So that is that. Here it is. Boots, just like that. So we've got plenty, if it wants to focus here, plenty of thread engagement here. Nice shaft, goes straight through the cutout for this tin. It's like I've done it on purpose. So that is that, here's our little, so now I just got to bend this up to suit that and the other side is exactly the same, thank you very much. So this guy, I don't know, remember which way around it goes like this I think, this side is going to be exactly the same. So that's mad, I can make both exactly the same and we will be gravy. This will be further up here so that'll work nicely. For some reason these fucking setups don't come with a fucking fork, so I'm gonna make it. Thanks for fucking nothing. All right, so have me foot pegs bent up here. So this was my template, as you remember. So I didn't film myself bending this because I'm an idiot. So anyway, I'll just go through with you. This is my little bending jig that I made. It's actually just some bits of angle that I've stiffened up. And that's how you fucking, that's what you put in your press. That's how you press your angles, your bends. Everything. So that's what I did this with. I did it with a crude little, little fucking uh, press like that. So you don't need anything special. You can do it with little home press. So that's them guys bent up. I'll um, put one on the bike and show you how it looks. Let me just set this up. Right. Here. So as I said, I got M8 uh, bolt on the bottom because fuck trying to find a imperial bolt when you're out in the middle of nowhere on the road. So. Let me just bolt this on quickly so we can have a good look. Oh, yep. There we go. Fucking look at that. That's fucking come out an absolute treat. Come, come, come down here and have a look, would ya? So, as you can see, the thing is super tight in there. Nice and tight. I can just bend this to, to fix it up so it's not like it's bent in the wrong way. So that is super tight in there, hugs the primary real nice. Obviously you're gonna to have to take the primary off. I mean, this off to have a look in the primary, but you get that on the big jobs. So that's the peg that'll go on there like that. Looks super nice. So I think I said I ended up making them both exactly the same. Hey Ross, you know, wait brother. Um, so this side should end up pretty sweet too. So this is obviously a side one. There you go, foot peg in, it's hanging a bit low, it goes up a bit more, but you get the idea. So I thought the same thing, looks a bit weird with this big gap here, but it is perfect. I'm gonna fucking shoot the exhaust through there like that. So the exhaust is gonna go in between the foot peg and the cone there like that, so that'll be nice. It'll just sneak down here, through there, and then up the back, nice fucking up sweeps. This is super tight in here, so I'm gonna have to, I got two different radius bends, so I'm gonna have to get a tight radius bend in there to shoot that exhaust down through here. That needs to come up like that a bit, but I'll shoot that through there. Yep, in here, should be fucking sweet. So that's my foot pegs done. Um, I've got my material over here to do the sissy bar. So this is what I'm doing the sissy bar out of. This is some 30 mil by five flat. Just 304 because it's not seeing salt water so it doesn't fucking matter. So before I bend this, I'm going to bend it in my same little thing there. Before I bend this, I'm going to polish the inside because I won't be able to do it once it's bent. So I'll show you that. I'm going to polish the inside, bend it, and then polish the outside. Okay, so I'm starting to make some hardware for Fraser's exhaust. I wanted to do this a little bit differently because 
I don't know if you've ever fucked with an Evo exhaust before. It has like a weird little flange on the end of the pipe. And then this guy has a little circlet that clips on there on the end. And then that's what pushes it into the fucking, into the little gasket. Now I want to do that a bit differently because they always flog out and I don't like the look of them. And I wanted to do a bit more solid and just fucking weld it together. So this is my head off the little Evo project that I'm doing. Um, this swallowed a bolt and was absolutely fucking destroyed in here and I've welded it up and I've made a decking tool and decked this. Um, if you want to see more of that shit, jump on my Instagram. There'll be a plug somewhere here in one of these corners. Um, so the reason I've got this head is because I'm sussing out how I want this to work. So these are some stainless steel flanges that my buddy Joel cut me. Um, I've just machined up this little guy and he has a spigot that goes into the exhaust flange like that and then pull this off. And then this OD is the right size for that. So that'll all weld together as one piece with a nice fat spigot that contacts the exhaust gasket like that. So I would just put this in here with, this has no exhaust gasket in it so I can see complete crush and there's heaps of room there so that's how it'll live. And then I weld that guy into there like that. And then it's a complete welded piece instead of having a loose flange. I didn't really like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So to start with, I'm gonna weld these two pieces together, I think. And then I can bolt this into the head in the bike. And then I can just cut my pipe, my um, tube size, stick it in there and tack it where I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld these up and then we'll go over to the bike and start looking at the exhaust. All right, so I've welded both of these up. Um, these are all the bends, well not all of them, but I've got some large radius and some tighter radius stuff here. So I've bolted the other one in the head here. As you can see, it has quite a sharp bend that's gonna come straight out of the back of it. But that's all right, you've seen these now, how I've done that. So they will just cruise in there like that and they are a very positive contact. So that'll be super strong in there, get a really good, really good seal. As I said, here's the gaskets for it. So the gaskets will sit there like that and that'll crush against them. So that'll be mint. So as I said, I have some Larger radius and some tighter radius. I wanted to save the larger radius for the bend out beside the oil bag here because I want this a bit more gradual. But this one here and this one through here will have to be tight guys. So I'm gonna use some tight guys. I'm gonna show you how I go through and do that. I just do it on the humble drop saw over there. So I'll show you how I do that. But for the time being, I have to do this. So I need this. These stupid things don't come with a fucking a fork to go into the master. So before I know where this is gonna be, where the exhaust can come through, I've gotta make this fork. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that fork quickly, and then I'll come back when I'm ready to start this, this front part. Okay, so I have made my little brake fork now. I don't know if you can hear, there's a bit of a storm fucking happening at the moment, so um, if you can hear it, that's fucking why. Um, so I've done my brake fork now, so I can go through and start making the exhaust. Now with these bends, when you want to cut it, you want to make sure you cut the radius through the center of the arc. So uh, to, I'll, I've got a little, I'll just I'll, uh, to show you a little bit here how I, what I mean by that. So this is my little, you can make yourself a little jig that does this, but so what you want to do, you want to line up your Line up your tube with um, like the corner or something so you can always do it again the same next time. And I'm just gonna, just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna trace the arc of the outside and trace the arc of the inside. So there is our bend in a 2D form, right? So whenever we wanna cut this, so we're gonna make the center of the radius there, say. So whenever we want to cut this, if I put this little bit of TIG and I just hold it there in the center of the radius, whenever we want to cut it, we always want to cut it from the radius like that. So it's always going to make the correct cut. So we want to cut it there, we put a line down it, 
Perfect. You want to cut it halfway in the middle like that. We can cut it straight through there. Then again like this. So you can see that's just a dodgy, but you can see what I mean. You always want to cut it from the center of the radius. So you can make yourself a little jig where you put this in the same spot every time. You could put like a fucking, I don't know, a nail or something there with a bit of string and that'll show you where the center of the radius is and you can mark it like that. Now I've done quite a few of these so I can just do this by eye and sort of work it out and that's the way I do it. So I'll show you how to cut this in drop saw the dodgy way by eye. All right, we're down here at the humble drop saw. So as you can see, I've taken off the clamp because no one needs that bullshit. So I've got the sort of idea of where I want this thing cut for that front pipe. So what you do, you put your little saw down like this and you work out the spot like that. So the thing with this, you can always take material away. You can't add it. So you want to make sure you're not taking too much. So the reason I cut on a drop saw is because it always gives you a fucking dead straight cut and it gives you a nice cut like that and then you can just quickly go back over there and see if it's all right. So no one needs clamp, clamps are for pussies, just fucking hold it. All right, so I just gave our little bit a touch up on the linisher. So now that I've got this little spigot in here, I can just jam this in here, hit it hard up on the spigot and we're on. So as you can see, I need to go a little bit more, like I said. You can always take some more off, you can't put, put it back on. So I've got to take a bit more of the radius because I want this pipe to sit a bit further out there close to the, close to the, uh, the down tube there. So I'll take a bit more out because I want to sort of shoot it down in this direction. So I'll take a bit more out and come back. All right, so I've taken a little bit more off this. Now I'm just gonna, I made it so I can push it in and it stays there. So just like that. So that's sort of the start. I'll move this back a bit so you can see. So this is the start. What I'm gonna do next to try and work out because I have this really tight section through here like that, I'm gonna do something weird like this. I'm gonna put the straight on this first. I'm gonna cut a straight piece, put it on this first and then work out where the, the end of it's gonna end up so then I can do the rest of it and poke it through here like that. So I'm gonna go and cut this, put it on there, try and fucking nut this out a little bit and we'll come back and we'll have a look at it when I've got it sorted. All right, so I've done a bit of fucking nutting out here and this is what it ended up like. So I was originally gonna put a third bend in here but I managed to get away with just two. So this one here and then this one back and then that one up there and then into the head. So, you know, less is always more. Um, Unless this is like an FLH bagger and um, you have a heap of lights and shit on it, but it's not. So I'm gonna leave this off for now. I'm not gonna tack that up because I wanna do the rear section. So the last bend and then the fishtail. This is what's gonna be out the arse end of it. So this is just like a off the shelf fishtail and that's gonna slip into the end of it. So I'm gonna cut this tube to length, put the sweep in it and then probably just tack this front pipe together in the right spot and then I can fucking work out where the rear pipe goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this front pipe, have the little kick at the back with a fishtail and then I'm gonna come through and not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with this pipe yet. I usually try and tuck it low so it's got a bit of height to fucking kick up the back to try and make the rear pipe longer because obviously Equal length's the best, but you never get away. You never do that with a Harley unless you come forward, and this isn't a tracker, so we won't do that. So probably come down somewhere here, and then have the bend, and then make them parallel, obviously out the back. So I'm going to go ahead, like I said, do the front pipe, and then we'll come and have a look at the rear pipe. All right, so I had a bit of crack energy, and I have gotten this front pipe completely done. The fishtail is on it. Um, like I said, got away with two bends there, misses all my brake stuff so I don't have to dint that in like normal cone shovel stuff. So that's fucking sick. All that's all tacked together now. As I said, got the sweep at the back, fishtail is on. I'm 
Not 100% on this yet. I'm not sold on the angle of this yet. I think it might need to be a bit further down. I think it's got too much of a fucking bobber look like that. But hopefully when we put the back rear pipe on, it sort of fixes it up a bit. And then when we put a sissy on, it'll fix it up a bit. But I'm going to leave that for now. It's just tacked up so I can change it if I want. But now I'm going to start dealing with this rear pipe. As you can see, I had a bit of crack energy and I have a little bit of it nutted out already. So you gotta fucking start somewhere. So I've just tacked a few little bits that I had off cuts from other shit and just making that work. So I've sort of started with this and then I've got a few little other bits and pieces. I think I'll just come down. I want it to sort of, sort of come along and just hide the bottom of the oil bag a bit. I think it looks better. And then we'll have the kick and make it parallel with this front pipe, but I just want probably the back a bit further out. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up because you've already seen the process on the front pipe and then we'll see how it looks. Alrighty, so after a couple of these, I got this rear pipe all nutted out now. So it looks pretty freaking sweet. Let me move past this thing. So I wanted this sort of section here to be in line with the bottom and then kick up. I didn't want to do it in one big swoop because they're quite notchy through here already. If they were nice sweepers, I'd do it in a nice sweeper, but being the sort of bike it is, I think it looks nice in a nice notchy. So I might have to tweak this just a little bit, but that is the gist of the pipes all done. So uh, I'm gonna do the sissy bar next. I'm gonna bend that up just out of some 30 by five flat bar. And then I can start doing some mounts off the sissy bar on to the pipes. And I might do something in the middle of this one. Not sure yet, but that is sort of how it is going to look. I think Fraser might want these a bit shorter. In my opinion, that's how I'd run them, if not longer, but it's his bike, he'll do what he wants. So we might shorten these up a little bit in the future, but for now, this is how it's going to live. And let's get on and do this sissy bar now. All right, got a little update on Fraser's little sissy bar that I've got going here. Um, I have bent up a few of the parts here. As you can see, I spoke about last, about polishing all this up. So I've got this to like a 240 um, inside and out. So you don't want to be trying to polish that inside after you've bent it. So inside and out. I bent up this little piece too. I didn't polish it because I just took it to work. But this little guy sits on there like that. So as you know, this rib fender is annoying to make a little thing for. So I just bent this up quickly in the press, a few little fucking doodads. Uh, I'm just gonna put two holes in it and then I'm gonna bolt through the, through the old guard and then cut this to wherever my sissy bar ends up. So I've got most of the pieces together here. Um, I bent this with this little jig that I made. So basically that'll sit in the press like that and this guy will come through and push that. So that gives you a nice radius and a uniform bend. Um, definitely could have done this with heat, but I'd much rather um, cold form all this fucking stainless stuff. And then you don't have to deal with all the heat marks and if you unevenly heat it, it will bend. It will be softer in some spots and bend unevenly. So if you cold form it, it's all the same temperature. So it's, it'll bend perfectly like that. So you don't have, you know, a bit of a if skew if one way. So I'm going to go, you can definitely do this in the vise as well. Um, I'm going to bend these last little bits in the vise I think just because I can't get it in the press anymore. So um, you could do the whole thing in the vise if you really wanted, but oh well, I had the tools so I used them. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do the pretty rough shape. I'll come back and show you probably when I've tacked this inner bit in and done quite a bit of stuff. I wanna get this sort of knocked over, so we'll come back when I've got most of it sorted and I'm putting it on, I reckon. But I need to order some stuff to polish these pipes too, I'll show you that. All right, so I've got this thing ready to weld on now. As you can see, I've cut this um, little band over the top here. I've cut it and I've polished it. Always polish it before you fucking put it on because obviously you're not gonna be able to polish in here. So I've bolted that on onto the fender now. I've put it across there. Sissy bars in the nice spot now. It's the angle I want it, so that's nice. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna weld this out. I'm gonna cut these how I want them. 
And then I gotta wait for my buddy Joel to cut me a license plate plate. And then the sissy bar is done. But in the meantime, after I finish this, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna start welding out the exhaust. Now, like I said, I'm gonna internally purge this. So, and I might do a little demonstration and show you why you do that. All right, I'm here on my little welding bench. Um, I'm gonna weld up this rear header first because obviously it's the easier one. It's got less fucking parts in it. Um, how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that internally purging this. So I'm gonna put in the argon on the inside as well as shielding it from the outside. And by doing that, when you're welding the outside, because you're shielding the inside as well, there's no air in there, it'll actually put a nice weld on the inside as well. And we wanna do that because I'm gonna shave off all the welds on the outside, make this thing look seamless. So, I've done a little test piece here. So you come down and have a look at this. All right, so this is my little test piece. So this, I've cut this in half now, but this used to be a straight piece that I just cut in half and I made this little thing just to show you the difference. So I've welded half without gas and half with gas. So when I cut it in half, you can see the difference. So this side you can see I've, I've welded without gas and this side I've welded with gas. Now, see the difference? See how this guy is not fused at all and it's just porosity and stuff? Where this is the one I've shielded with gas and there's a weld on the inside and the outside at the same time. And that's what we want because we're gonna be taking this weld off the outside. So if you've just done this and then you take the weld off the outside, it's just gonna break because there's no weld on the inside. So that is how you get a weld on the inside of this pipe all the way up here. So. I'll show you how we're gonna set this up and what to do, but that is the desired outcome. All right, so as you can see, I've got the tube going in one side of the pipe. I've just um, just taped it, like it's just a normalized tape. Tape that, doesn't have to be crazy because it's gonna leak air anyway, gonna leak argon, I mean. So I've put the tube in that side like that, and on this side, I've blocked it, right? So this is completely blocked. Now what you do, you get your little TIG torch, make sure it's not hot. And you just want to poke a hole in this. If it wants to focus, it just want to poke a little hole in that like that. So letting the gas out slowly. So it's just a tiny little hole there. So that helps us for two reasons. That keeps the gas in and you can tell how much gas you've got coming out of that. So coming over to our regulator, let's turn this bitch on, she's on. So. We want to start letting gas out of this guy, right? You can see a little ball will come up. So you want to do a, a lot first, just to like push, just to flush the air out. So you do a lot first, that's on whatever, 11 liters per minute. And you can see it, so this one will, will be working too, but I want it to live at about four liters per minute. So down there, but we have to make sure when we turn on the machine that this is still getting liters per minute as the machine's getting it. So we'll turn the machine on. This is my little, that turns the gas on for me. So as you can see, I've got 10 liters going to the machine and I have nothing going to my feed now. So I need to up this a little bit. There's a little bit going to the pipe and the rest is going to the machine. So that's good. I can turn this off and now this is ready to weld. And a good way to test this, you just lick your finger, put a little spit on the bastard and then you put it over the hole and you can feel when it's cold because the air is coming out. So that is mint. So this is ready to weld now. I'm gonna time lapse this, weld it and show you. All right, so I have completely welded this thing out. Um, the beauty of what I'm doing is that all these welds on the outside are gonna get smoothed off and are gonna make these a nice polished set of headers. So really doesn't matter what the weld looks like on the outside, as long as you've got nice penetration and everything so the inside welds mint, you'll be fine. So that is that pipe done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rear pipe now and then I'm gonna show you how I polish these things. It's a long and tedious process.
Alrighty, so we got all our um, exhaust pipes all welded up now, all internally purged. These are all fucking sorted. So now I'm gonna go through and start polishing all the welds out. Now this is a very tedious and long uh, process. So if you wanna save yourself some time before you weld these things up, make sure you have all the joints perfect. When you put it together, make sure all your joints are nice and everything's perfect, all the pipes line up and everything. And then you'll have less work to do when it comes to this. So this one, as you can see, I've already done. I'll show you a bit closer. I've already done this. So this is, I've just got this down to 120. So this is sort of how I'm gonna run it while I'm doing mounts and everything on the bike that you can see is covered up because I don't want all this shit all over it. So I'm gonna take it to 120 on this guy as well. And then I'm gonna put these back on the bike and then I'm gonna sort out all the clamps and mounts and everything to the sissy bar. And the reason I do that is because when we weld these things, they're obviously gonna move and do a bit of their own thing. So you wanna make the mounts after you've welded them out, otherwise you might weld these things out and already made the mounts and they don't fucking fit. So that's a real pain in the ass. So I'm gonna go through and use my trusty little tool here. This is just like a pipe sander that I got off eBay. Man, it was like 120 Australian dollars. It was cheap as chips. And you can just buy all these different grits of um, paper for it. So obviously you start at the heaviest, which is like a 60 grit, this one. And then we go 120, 240, 400, 600. 600 is about what you want to go to before you polish it anymore. And it just gets a bit annoying and you don't need to. So we start at a 60 and then we go over the whole thing in a 60 and then you go over the whole thing in a 120, 240, 400, 600. And then you polish it and then it comes out mint. But like I said, I'm just gonna go through and get it to 120 and then I'm gonna do the mounts and then I'm gonna come back when the bike's almost finished and I'm gonna polish all these so they're finished. Just because then I don't scratch it or do some other bullshit while I'm doing the rest of the bike. So I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna time lapse this. I'll show you me sanding this one down. A um, little tip, it sometimes helps to have some files. If you've got a little area, that needs to be fixed up. Sometimes it's easier just to touch it up with a file and then come through with the buff. Sometimes the linisher will take some material off where you don't exactly want it. With a file, you can take very, like it's whatever material you want in a really exact spot. Just saves you, you know, taking wall out of the pipe and then it might crack because it's too thin. So, time lapse, let's fucking do it. All right, I got these all roughed out now. It took fucking quite a while, but got there in the end. It's an awesome end result, so it's fucking worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the bike now. I'm gonna put the sissy bar back on that I've just polished. I still need to put a number plate mount on that, so that's not finished, but I have these little um, exhaust mounts. So I'm gonna put the exhaust on now, and then I'm gonna put those exhaust mounts, drill some holes on the sissy bar, and then that'll be the exhaust mounted and done. That's them all bolted up. They look fucking pretty sweet, all polished like that. I just gotta do a bit of spacing and stuff to make sure they're in line at the end. That'd be pretty sweet. So with the mounts for this, I've just got these, these are just generic fucking six inch long things. You just cut them to whatever you need. Um, with the bottom guy, I'm just gonna go off the axle plate here, that guy there, and the top one, I'm just gonna drill a hole in the sissy bar somewhere, bend that a bit bolter in. Um, with these exhausts too, I'm gonna give Fraser the option with this. If he doesn't wanna run them so fucking radical out there, I'm gonna make them so that you can slide these down 150 mil all the way from these and just make it a bit less fucking red hot. So if you're going somewhere, there's some cops or something, you can fucking, you know, make these shorter so it doesn't look so obnoxious. And then if you don't give a fuck, you can run them out here. This is where I'd leave them, but I'm gonna give Fraser the option. So I'm gonna have to shorten this guy about 150 mil so that this guy can slide down when you want him to. So you keep this fucking line here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do both these engine, these engine mounts, these 
exhaust mounts here. Bolts them all on, I'm gonna cut this so it's in the right spot, I'm gonna bolt that on, and then that's pretty well it for the exhaust. All right, so here we have it. This is the exhaust on, mounted, everything. I've just got to finish off the polishing, but this is how they're going to live. So I've got the foot pegs on here. So I've got nice gap between the foot pegs and the exhaust. Nothing hitting on my brake setup, so that's nice. I'll have no vibration, dings and bangs there. Um, the rear, I've just done the little mounts off here like that. Um, I've done the bottom one off the axle plate just in the corner there. That's an awesome little one. I always use that. And yeah, that's how the pipes are going to stay. So that is fucking sweet. So I'm just test fitting a few things. Got some oil lines on there. I know I said I wanted to make these, but I'm really running out of fucking time. I just need to get it done. So I'm going to use these ones. Make some later, like down the track. but. Use them for now. Um, what else am I playing with? Oh, I'm playing with clutch side stuff. Just got a clutch lever that I've cut up and modified here. Luckily it wasn't chromed, it was just black. So you can chrome it in the future if you want. I've got some holes here for adjustment for the leverage on the chain. So you can move this up or down if you want more adjustment or it's a bit nicer on the pedal. Um, what else? Oh, I'm gonna change this stand. I wanna bend it there to get this out of the way. That'll be pretty cool. Um, coil mount, I modified because I can't leave anything alone. I cut that up and moved it back in because the coil stuck out. It looked like a fucking, looked like shit. So that's all sorted. Um, that's basically it. Just gonna get a chain for the rear wheel, put all the brake stuff together, get some brake line stuff. I'm gonna chuck this in here. Um, what else do I need to do? Um, I'm basically just waiting on a lowbrow order because I bought a heap of cloth wire and stuff to wire this up. I think it'd look a lot nicer. So cloth wire, some brake switch and stuff, just little bits and pieces. And then I can do the final bits on this. So I think that'll be the end of this episode. Um, stay tuned for the part three, the last episode. It'll be Putting this thing, the last little bits, be wiring it up, it'll be oil bag stuff, it'll be you know doing stuff for the carby. I'm gonna have to tune this because for some reason he's taking the CV off this and put a Super E on it. Super E's are the worst fucking carburetor. I don't know why everyone likes them so much. Super uh, the CV carburetor is the fucking best. CV the fucking world. So if you're taking a CV off to put one of these on, you're rocks in your head. So I'm gonna have to wrestle with that. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. If you haven't already, uh, jump in the corner there. I think I've got a little plug for my uh, Instagram. Jump on that, Phil's Works at Instagram. Um, I post heaps more little bits and pieces on stuff like this and other stuff that I'm not filming that I'm working on as well. So jump over that, give me a follow. If you haven't already, just give us a subscribe as well. You know, I wanna keep making these things. One day I can just work on my own stuff. I don't have to get paid to do this by the bikes like this. So I'd love to just work on my own stuff and film that. So help me help you. So hit us a subscribe and stay tuned for the last episode putting this bike together. Cheers fellas.